afternoon, members of the press. Thank you for coming to our eighth installment uh, for PAP candidates. Today I'm introducing uh, three more candidates, uh, Simeon, Mr. Ang Wienan, and General Chan Chun Singh. But before I allow them to introduce themselves, let me just make some remarks. And I thought it would be useful to give an insight to our central preoccupation from the PAP's point of view for this general election. We are preparing for a future that is um, inherently unpredictable, and I think the last decade uh, taught us those lessons. If you look at the major problems starting from 2011, whether it was terrorism and then SARS, and then a global financial crisis, none of these those events were foreseen. They are all unforeseen events. And we can only be certain that there will be new challenges and that there will be more competition from China, Vietnam and India. So our best protection cannot be in how many political parties are waiting in the wings should the ruling party fail. And the opposition candidly admits that they are not in a position to form an alternative government. Our greatest threats are external, not internal. Um, most of you would know that our trade is three and a half times our GDP, and we've been called the canary in the mine for global trade. When global trade falls, we get hit. When it comes up, we're the first to revive. So for the PAP, we believe that for Singapore, the best way forward is to Continue strong, decisive government supported by a united and hardworking people. And this has been the basis for our continued progress. And this has been the central preoccupation in terms of planning for this general election. And this is why in this round, we made extra efforts to find and feel many PAP candidates who are, candidates who are potential ministers and office holders to take us from 2020 and beyond. We were looking specifically for people who could succeed as cabinet ministers and office holders. The task is urgent and vital, if I can just characterize it in, in this way. In 10 years' time, the youngest minister in the cabinet, in a current cabinet today, we have two of them, Liu Tak Yu and Vivian Balakrishnan, will be 60 years old in 10 years' time. Half of the current MPs in our House, including both PAP and opposition, will be older than 62. Christopher de Souza, our youngest MP now, will be 45 years. So this GE is critical for renewal, to keep up with change and prepare for an uncertain future. We therefore have to put in place a fourth generation leadership now. So the fourth generation leadership must be, each must be able or capable individually, but collectively also able to represent the hopes and aspirations of all Singaporeans. And within two terms, they must be able to form the next strong, decisive government to continue Singapore's progress. So th these were the parameters that we looked very carefully at in choosing and in fielding our final or our slate of 87 candidates. So for the 87 candidates that we are fielding, the median age, the median age is 49. It's a good balance, we think. Wisdom and experience of the older half mentoring the younger half. There will be certainly more women, more women than ever before, if I can give a number, we're fielding 20 female candidates this coming election for PAP. Uh, if you look at the records from 1988 to 1997, there were about two to four women. From in year 2001, there were 10. 2006, there were 17 female parliamentarians. We are fielding 20. And this is, reflects the higher ability and aspirations of women in Singapore. We know they're more educated, they want to take on bigger roles, and I think it makes sense for us to tap on their both ability and their, and their capabilities and ability to 
to speak on issues that affect women and the general population at large. For minority candidates, it will be as many as the 20 or 6. Uh, there will be 12 Malay candidates that we are fielding. If I can give some statistics again, in 1988 to 1997, there were 10. Then from 2011 to 2006, there were 12. And this time, this time around, the same number of Malay candidates, 12 Malay candidates, 9 Indian, 2 Eurasians. Reflecting again our multiracial society. Now these 24 new candidates that we've introduced so far will have to make way, the incumbents will have to make way for them. And I want to just say a little about those stepping down. On average, they'll be 20 years older than the new candidates replacing them. And of the, can of the MPs who are stepping down, they've contributed significantly, served to the best of their abilities to ensure that Singapore's progress was steady and upward. The earliest among them, of course, were Pro Senior Minister Jaya Kumar and Minister Lim Boon Heng, who first became MPs in 1980, about 31 years ago. They're not stepping down because they are no longer able to contribute. Many of them will still have many years of political life left. They have built up a constituency and they're able to hold the ground. They are still fertile in their thinking. But they are doing so because they understand the urgency and the importance of renewal, change and continuity. I would we'd like to salute these comrades for their efforts and contributions. And they're still busy helping new candidates to be accepted on the ground and during the hustings, when the campaign period is officially on, many of them will be on the ground. All political systems must be judged primarily on how they have improved the lives of citizens. And I think in this, Singapore's political system has done well. We need to constantly evolve, but not by weakening a system that has provided progress and stability. PAP wants to provide an even better quality of life to all Singaporeans in the future. So just as the first generation of leaders prepared the second and third generation of leaders, the third generation leadership is now preparing the fourth and fifth. We ask the voters to vote for the PAP to bring in the best team for our future. I like to call upon uh, Mr. Mann to uh, start our uh, introductions. Thank you.